the age I started Wing Chun was uh, in 1951. I was uh, about uh, the end of uh, 10 years old. And I, I trained with the uh, Grandmaster Yip Man in Hong Kong. I set up uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu in Australia. Uh, I've been training Wing Chun for 60 years and I've been teaching professionally for 40 years. My name is Grandmaster William Chung. Uh, I'm a martial art instructor and also I'm a doctor and professor in Chinese medicine. The, the philosophy of Wing Chun actually stems from the, uh, the Chinese Kung Fu martial art. Uh, the word of the Kung Fu was written, one side of it is fighting, the other side of it is to stop. So if you're using the art to stop the fighting, it serves the purpose of martial art. It's not you using, <laughs> you're using your skill and, uh, and your prowess to invade other people or to, you know, to hurt other people, but it's to stop. The fighting. Of course, you know, they are much more than that. Uh, like uh, to learn to respect oneself, then they can respect other people. And that's very important because uh, that actually extended to everything else, you know, like uh, in Confucius said, if you don't want something done to you, and you don't do it to other people. Uh, my name is Wenu Wu. I'm a chef for 16 years. I uh, joined up at the Wing Chun Academy three years ago. Uh, basically, my health was not good. I was not happy. I needed to balance things out. And uh, Wing Chun was the way I saw to do it, get my health back and hopefully get my happiness back and live a bit of a healthier lifestyle. Kitchens are not healthy. A really quick history on Wing Chun. Uh, you'd have to go right back to the start. Before the Han invasion, five masters came together to create a better system for training warriors. Now, before the Han invasion, it'd take 10 to 15 years to create a warrior, a decent warrior. And over 10 to 15 years, you'd lose so many men on the battlefield, it just didn't compute. So the five masters come together to create a better system. The Hans invaded, four of the masters were killed off and one survived. Ung Mai, a female nun, she continued to develop the system. She took a lot of the yang uh, force meet force, made it very subtle for a user and devastating for an opponent. Now, she married a guy who introduced the dragon pole and eight more generations of masters have come and gone. They have refined and added in meridians and butterfly swords and really honed in on all the stuff that's life-saving and got rid of everything that may only work 95% of the time. Um, so we've basically gone from 15 years to seven years and then over the last eight generations we're looking at three to four years to create a proper warrior. Now that is mostly a knowledge-based skill nowadays because we don't have the opportunity to go out on the battlefield and really check a lot of this stuff because it is life-saving techniques. Uh, there's finger strikes, pressure point, meridian striking, this sort of thing you can't do to your training partner. Um, you can't do it in a tournament. It is really street fighting application, life-saving sort of stuff. What are the principle and, uh, and strategy of uh, traditional Wing Chun? Traditional Wing Chun teach you just to watch one point, the elbow, control one point, the elbow, and go to the blind side. Because to be able to make it work, uh, one has to have very good contact reflexes. That's where the chi cell comes in. Because uh, all the other martial arts system in the world, they all fight face to face, square on, because uh, they could not fight on the blind side. Because without controlling the elbow, without the, the skill and technique to control the elbow, they could not fight on the blind side. It's the only style that was developed by a woman and you get other martial arts that would laugh at that. Um, my name is Andrew Chong. I'm the son of Grandmaster William Chong. 
and I'm 20 years old and I work at the traditional Winton Academy in Melbourne. Watch Neobo fight on the blind side and what we mean by that is you don't want to fight force with force, okay? If you face someone toe to toe, square on, <clears throat> then you're either relying on your speed or your strength or like maybe even um, your timing, yeah, more your, like even more so your timing, things like that, and your re reflexes. Winston is the only one that knows how to control the elbow. Okay, it's very very dangerous if you don't know how to control your opponent when fighting on the blind side. It's a very very dangerous place to be because all they got to do is line you up with just a jab and throw it across. That's why. That's why you see boxers, they, they usually fight toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Like, Wu Chun Punch, you could, you could hit someone right there, like that, and it has, and it would hurt them. Now, if I do that with my elbow out, like this, with my elbow out, I need my hip and shoulder to move, am I right? Like, when, when you're doing, like, Muay Thai, you know, they use their, their hip and their shoulder. You gotta stand up to do that, though. You can't do that sitting down. Also, you're not over committing. When you do this, you over commit. Like when you're standing up, you over commit each time. Even if you're on balance, you gotta go one way from there. When you do this, you over commit. When you're here, it's, it's recovery time. You can't put an average person on the streets with a bit of Muay Thai and expect them to defend themselves. But you can give them a couple of Wing Chun techniques and expect them to be able to defend themselves. So, that, in my opinion, is how Wing Chun compares, it's just, it, it's a very economical style for like movement and energy wise and also at the same time you don't have to be big and strong to do it, which is proof, I mean, you look at Yip Man, look how skinny he is and he, was able, and he was able to slap people around all over the place. If you have a look at all the systems, you'll find 70 year old Wing Chun masters still kicking 30 year old asses, which I think is fantastic. History on Yip Man. He is our Sifu Sifu. As a practitioner, he was uh, unbelievable. He was five foot two. He's not a big guy. He was kind of frail. Uh, the Wing Chun neutral stance um, is basically where all our power comes from in Wing Chun. He had mastered the stance to a point where four fellas like myself could stand one behind the other, behind the other, behind the other, and push in on him, and he could just stand there and absorb all that strength. Was Sai Wan or Yip Man the first student? Um, at that time, there's only eight uh, senior students to me. I joined with uh, my brother. In fact, uh, most of the uh, contemporary students, they all pass away except uh, Choi Xiong Tin. But uh, Choi Xiong Tin's health is not that good either. You know, he's got uh, cancer and I don't think he will he will survive very long. I know that he has probably seen a lot of people killed and um, that's one of the reasons why he devotes himself so much to street and anti violence, how to, how to um, defend yourself without having to attack to get away from situations rather than having to beat someone senseless. So it become a ritual that every week that we had a challenge match either on the roof or on the new territory. And so, um, so in the end, I fought um, the best fighter in, uh, in the triads, you know, and they, they gave him the title of uh, Double Plum Flower Dragon Pole. You know, that's his title. And uh, so I defeated him and uh, he was a gentleman, in fact, even though he was um, in the triads, you know, and we became friends. In fact, he saved my life a couple of times, you know, because in fact, we were doing on the roof and, and he was at the edge of the roof. He literally fell off and I, I caught him. I saved him. My dad has had plenty of street encounters having to deal with um, a lot of the gangs in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, back then, it wasn't how it's known as today. There were a lot more slums there. They had, um, when he was fighting there, it's different to how what we know as fighting. We know as fighting is just defending yourself from pe from a bunch of drunk guys. When he was, when he was fighting, he was fighting for his life in Hong Kong. Every street situation is a possibility he could have been killed. 
I think Andrew is very good, very dedicated, and uh, of course, you know, uh, he's still, uh, well, they, they say in the Chinese uh, philosophy that you have to, a lot of time that you learn when you make a mistake, right? Uh, Andrew was uh, very dedicated uh, to Wing Chun, but for him, for for a few years before that, uh, you know, he's focusing on Wing Chun now. Uh, he was uh, exposed to the Jiu so he went over to learn, and so so he's a prise, and he understood that Wing Chun was much more superior. So. Now he's very focused now. Uh, time will tell that uh, Andrew will probably be very, very good. You know, I'm, I'm very confident of it. The pressures on Andrew would be immense. He has grown up with a father such as William Chung and he's world renowned. Um, and if you look at other, doesn't matter what job they're doing, but if you look at other father-son dynamics, most generally, the son will want to go off and make his own path and do his own thing and not follow his father's footsteps. My heart and everybody I know that knows him really hope that he does follow through and fill that position, um, but that'll be entirely up to him. Um, he's still young, he's got a lot of living to do. We all hope the knowledge from his father will be passed through him to us um, and so on and so forth so that we can continue the Wing Chun lifestyle. If three people came at me, I would be comfortable to get out of that situation. I'm not saying I wouldn't get hit, I'm not saying I wouldn't get hurt, but I would get out of that situation. The first way I'd deal with it is I wouldn't deal with you. Now the reason why I wouldn't deal with you is not because I think you're the best fighter out of all of them, but because you're in the middle. If I immediately go into the middle there, then I'm already done. Okay, because then there's two people on the side. I'll either go this way or I'll go that way. And so you, it's the same principle, you fight on a blind side, you don't fight force with force. And if I could talk it over with you three guys about not fighting, then I'll do that first. I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't want to get into that situation in the first place. The pressure on Andrew and like uh, the other Sun Gems uh, are very great because uh, they have to live up with my reputation and my you know, my, my name and so on, you know. But I think they are, they are very humble and they very, you know, they, they work very hard for, for what they want to achieve, you know. So I'm sure that they will handle it very well. Who would, who would win out of a fight between uh, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris in your opinion? Oh, they did fight and Bruce Lee won. That was a movie yeah. No, no, no. Outside behind that, but Chuck and I would never, would never talk about that. He would never say anything. It, it's as if it didn't happen. But it, I didn't know that. How do you know it happened? Well, my, my, dad was, my dad told me, and my dad was in contact with Bruce Lee, not, per, not face to face, but pen pals. From uh, one of Bruce Lee's letters, Chuck Norris was actually uh, defeated by Bruce and became Bruce's student, even though, uh, you know, he didn't admit it. He didn't admit it after, you know, after Bruce died, you know. But uh, I know for sure, you know, uh, uh, Bruce will beat Chuck Norris any day. Who, who would win a fight between Bruce and Chuck? I, I, I can't imagine Chuck winning. I just can't. <coughs> Your father and Bruce, what if they had to fight? Back in both in their peak state. <laughs> well, I, I gotta go with my dad on that. That's because, I mean, they both. Well, I mean, I'm looking at physical advantages, but I mean, these are two, <laughs> these are two people who would, who just don't believe they could lose. And also two people who are very, very skilled, but you got to take into account that my dad was Bruce Lee's senior. He was a senior, Bruce Lee was his junior. Because my dad, in, my dad introduced Bruce Lee to martial arts. I, I say hands down would beat him. He's the master of masters. When Bruce used to get in trouble in Hong Kong, Sifu pull him out of trouble. Uh, what does that mean, dude, win? 
Of course, I will. <laughs> 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 <laughs>